Visit SailRight.com for your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this video, we're going to show you how to make a four-deck bag that is great for protecting your sail and freeing up space in your sail locker below. To use it for your Hank's sail, simply buckle the bag to the forestay, then douse the sail, leaving your Hank's on the forestay. With the sail three quarters of the way into the bag, we'll zip up that front zipper. Then finish loading the sail into the bag and zip the top zipper as well. Having a front and top zipper makes it much easier to load the sail into the bag. This bag has several great features, one being the loop for a tie down to the deck that will reduce sway, and another being the zipper flap that is secured with hook and loop. This helps prevent damage to the zipper and water from entering the bag. So let's get started and show you how to make this four deck bag kit for your jib sail. In this first chapter, we'll be patterning our fabric. This is the pattern that you get with the four deck bag kit. And you'll notice that there's an S, an M, and an L for small, medium, and large. The circle over here is a half circle, and we'll show you how to deal with that. That saves on pattern material and keeps the cost down. And also the bag is a half bag. Now I recommend that you cut out the size that you ordered. If you ordered a small, then you'd obviously be cutting on these lines. This is a zipper flap, it'll be cut out separately as well, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it out here on the small lines all the way over here, and then I'm going to cut out the small circle here. Um, if you had a medium, you'd cut here, you had a large here, but basically vice versa. So first I'm going to cut on this line here, which separates the uh, half of the body from half of the circle. And you can just use scissors to cut this pattern material. We're not cutting through the uh, acrylic fabric underneath because of the way that we have to do this. So the reinforcement strips I'm cutting out um, as one long strip and then we'll put it on our vinyl like this. So I've laid it on my vinyl and you can use pins if you like. Um, I'm going to hold it in place as I cut. And we just want to cut on every one of these lines to cut out the reinforcement strips from our vinyl that's included in the kit. This kit comes with Sattler marine grade fabric. It's a premium outdoor fabric. It's UV resistant, stain resistant, water resistant, and it's breathable. Before we start patterning, you're going to want to make sure that the main body panel is oriented down the running length of the fabric as shown here. Now we're making the small four deck bag for our boat and this is the factory edge. This is the cut edge from Sailrite. So I want to line up this pattern, the bigger one, you want to start with that, so that the, this bottom edge, the edge that's opposite of this uh, strange V cut is against the, the selvage edge from the factory. And I don't have to use a hot knife on it because the factory does a good job of sealing that edge. So I've got it over here and I have a, an inch or so, mainly because I want to cut it with a hot knife here because this is just cut with uh, a knife. And what I want to do is I want to put lines, and I'm just using a number two pencil like this at each corner. So that represents exactly where I want to um, draw my straight lines because we're going to have to mirror this. And then I'm going to put a line here and then one here as well. So I might as well just finish this because this is really small right here. So we have that corner marked, we have this marked, this and this marked, and then make sure the pattern doesn't move. You can put a sandbag on it, but I'm being very careful. And then I'll put a mark here. Okay, so this is the center. So what I do now is, oh, I didn't put a mark here. Gotta do one there. What I do now is I take this and I flip it like this, and then I line it up with that mark there and the mark down here. So it's pretty easy to do this. So I'm on this mark here and I'm on that mark there, and now I'm going to just mark this side. I'm going to mark here. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish drawing this like that, a line coming up like that, and I will mark that corner. 
Okay. Now we're done with this pattern. Take a straight edge and mark from mark uh, mark each edge from mark to mark. Now, why am I using a number two pencil? Because these are going to be cut lines, so I don't have to worry about um, marking the fabric and having my marks not come off. And uh, you can really see with a uh, number two pencil on, especially this color of 100% uh, solution dyed acrylic marine grade fabric. This is our small circle. Your medium or large may not fit here, but you should have plenty of fabric elsewhere. Ours, I think, fits here. I'm going to verify that just by marking the center here and flipping it. Yep, it'll definitely fit there. So I'm going to hold this in place, or you can pin it, and I'm going to just mark around with my number two pencil. This is my cut line. And then I'm going to mirror it on the other side, just like we did with the other one. To mirror it, you have to put a line here, or a, a little line there, so that you know exactly where the where it's mirrored on this side, and we'll just trace around it in this, the same manner here. Now I have my zipper flap, and I'm going to position it along this factory edge, so I only have to cut uh, three of the edges, and I'm just going to put the little dashes again, and I'll strike a straight line. Okay, you can cut this out with scissors, but you'll get some unraveling. I highly recommend using a hot knife. This is a Serrate Edge hot knife. This is the cordless version. We have a corded version. Brand new foot called the Precision Cutting Foot and Blade. This is phenomenal. You don't have to use a cutting glass, so watch how this works. Uh, easy to uh, follow shapes, and uh, again, no cutting glass. Look at this. Wow, it's incredible. Sometimes I release the trigger because the blade sometimes gets a little bit too hot. So I release the trigger as I cut sometimes. Coming up, we'll be adding our vinyl reinforcement patches. So these patches go on this side and they just go right up against this corner and we'll sew a half inch uh, from this edge and this edge and they'll be turned the other direction. So I'm gonna hold them in place here and there's obviously one over there as well. So we put it up against the edge and then I'm gonna put the magnetic guide on at a half inch on the needle plate right there needles in center position we're going to sew over here and do a little bit of reversing we'll sew to the corner don't worry if it's a little bit off the edge it doesn't really matter about a half inch from the edge which is about right there it's a little bit too far in but it's fine yeah i better i better back it off it's a little bit too far so i'm going to lower my foot and i'm going to use a reverse lever That'll move the needle back to the half inch position. And then I can pivot on the needle, lower the foot, and sew down this side, and do reversing right here. And that's all you do to that. So we're gonna do the same thing to the one on the other corner. Next, we're gonna do the odd shaped reinforced patches. And these are on this side. These have to be facing down. So flip your panel over, and this will actually be the outside surface. So those need to be facing the tabletop. So these go on, so there's a little bit of overlap, very minute as you can see here. And this one would go on like this. Doesn't matter what side's up, because um, this is on the inside. So what I'm gonna do, I want them basted like that, and I wanna sew the middle first. So I'm just gonna hold down, and I'm gonna put my double-sided tape on this. Probably could have done that earlier, but this works. Peel off the transfer paper. Oh well, I had to reposition it. So put it on like that, put this one on like this, so it's a little bit over the edge, baste it down, and then we're going to sew right here. So I just sewed it, I did not show it, sewed it, showed it, get it. Position it, determine which side's going to have the double sided tape on, I'm going to baste it. Um, it doesn't have to be basted all around the perimeter, we're just going to baste it so it stays in place, so we're going to put one on each side in the middle and we're gonna baste it in place with that slight bit of overlap, like this. So the reason that we have this overlapping a little bit is the 100% solution dyed acrylic may, uh, if it's abraded, may unravel a little bit. The vinyl does, is very tough, so it helps to prevent that from happening. Let's take it over and sew it. Okay, we're gonna sew close to the edge again, using that uh, right side of the center foot, needles in center position. 
I don't want to be super close to the edge, but I want to be close enough that uh, it holds the vinyl in place. So I'll do a little bit of reversing here. We'll start here. Don't worry if your edges are slightly off like you can see mine is. Bury the needle, needle coming up, pivot around here. And I'm gonna have to push some of this fabric into the throat of the sewing machine, which is not a big deal. Don't worry about creasing it too much. Lower the foot, sew down this side. Trying to make sure you guys can see what's going on here. Went a little bit too far. I'm gonna use the reverse lever to go backwards. Needle's coming up. And I can pivot on this, push the fabric through. Not too hard. Lower it. Oops, went too far again. I'm gonna use the reverse lever. Needle's coming up, pivot again. Push the material through. Don't forget to lower your foot. Same process, we're gonna actually sew over here as well. So I'm not gonna show all that because it's pretty repetitive. I like to reinforce this area. So when I'm done sewing, I'll actually just do um, some reversing there, making sure that that stays, that's a fold. So I just like to do that just to provide a little bit more strength. You don't have to, but I like it. Okay, you don't wanna cut any of this out, but this is, this is okay to cut off. It's okay to leave it too. If you're off a little bit like that, don't worry about it. It's gonna be uh, sewing there anyway, but don't cut this excess away. In this chapter, we'll be sewing the separating zipper. Because we're gonna turn this right side out, I'm gonna cut off this corner, which will reduce some of the bulk at the corner, and then just basically turn this so that it's right side out like that, and then use a tool like a screwdriver or something to push the corner out so it looks as best as possible on that first seam. So that's how we do it, just like that. This is the outside surface. Now we wanna flip it to the inside surface like this, <clears throat> and we're gonna put double-sided tape on this edge all the way to here, keeping it close to the edge. And I'll just go ahead and put it on as close as I can get to that, which is right about there. We'll make sure it sticks with the Sayrite canvas patterning ruler to the acrylic fabric. Then we'll peel off the transfer paper. Okay, so now you can, if you'd like, you can measure, but I'm not gonna measure. I'm gonna just create a half inch hem here and just basically guess at it. Make sure that it's no less than a half inch. Okay, there we go. Then we're gonna use this ruler again to make sure it stays basted. I'm gonna go ahead and separate the uh, zipper that comes with it. This is the finished zipper. And we have a starter box and a starter pin. That's how you can tell it's a finished zipper. The slider's already on it. So let's just start with the one with the box on it. So the slider has a single pole slider on it. So it needs to be facing down against the tabletop like this. Otherwise it won't function. We're gonna put the box at the top here. This is the uh, corner where, we'll, where you'll zip down to the deck. So let's put double-sided tape all over on this side with the slider up. So we're gonna put the quarter inch basting tape along the flange all the way to the end as far away from the zipper's teeth as possible. Okay, and then we're gonna peel this off. And let's move the slider a little bit out of the way here. We want the teeth to be uh, basically just over the, uh, or right against the fold is what I should say. So they're not over it, they're just right alongside of it. And let's move this slider back now that I'm to this point. 
and baste all the way down. Your zipper, zipper should fit pretty nicely, which it does. And I'm gonna take this little tail and I'm gonna just fold it back here like that. And there we go. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move the needle to the right. Um, that way I get closer to the zipper's teeth. Um, we're not gonna put in a roping zipper foot. I'm gonna push this under here. We're gonna raise the feet a little bit. And I'm gonna sew as close to this as possible. The box is gonna make it so it's a little bit far from the teeth, but you, you have to start like this anyway. So we're gonna do some reversing here to lock the stitch in place. And do a little bit of reversing here because this is going to come under some stress. And then as soon as I get past the box, I'm going to make sure my presser feet are up against the teeth like they are now. And then we're just going to sew down this side. Now, when I get far enough, I'm going to take the slider. I'm going to bury my needle like that. I'm going to lift my presser foot. And I'm going to take this slider. And I'm going to try to keep my hands out of the way here from the cameraman. It's a little bit hard because I'm trying to work for you guys. Uh, push the slider past, the needle's buried so I didn't lose my spot, lower my foot, and then continue to sew. That's how you get by a slider. Okay, when we get to this end, all I'm gonna do is do some reversing. Make sure you reverse well. Okay, and that is installed. Now let's take it back over the table and put the other side on. I put basting tape on this edge because we're going to install the second zipper. So basically it's a repeat of the uh, first one. Then we're going to create that half inch hem and then uh, we'll show you how to baste on the next zipper. So the starter pin goes to this corner. Make sure you don't get it wrong. So that means I'm going to put basting tape on the opposite side so we can baste it up against the fabric. Peel off the transfer paper, revealing that glue. Now, this should go in the same spot. So if you look at your box here, we're that far from the end, and we want to be approximately the same distance here. And if we get to the other end and it looks like it's different, then I can always peel it up. So we're just basting it along that edge, concealing the teeth along the fold, when I get to this end, does this look like it's the same as this one? Actually, it looks like it's a little bit further, so I'm going to peel it up and move it up a little bit. You can stretch a zipper, so be careful not to stretch a zipper. I don't think I did stretch the zipper. It just wasn't exactly in the same spot, so that's all you're trying to do. Then we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew it in the same manner. I don't think we need to show that because it's there. That's perfect uh, because it's done exactly in the same way, except for you don't have to deal with the slider. In this chapter, we'll be creating our zipper flap. Okay, I'm going to use my basting tape that comes in the kit, and I'm going to put it across this uh, uh, zipper flap on one of the long sides. Again, there's no right side or wrong side, so it doesn't matter what side you put it on. And we will take off the transfer paper, revealing that beautiful glue that's acrylic, not rubber-based, so it doesn't yellow and it sticks really well. And we'll fold it directly in half and baste it well. If you want things to stick well with acrylics, because acrylics are very stain and water resistant and also glue resistant, use the Sarah Canvas Patterning Ruler. It helps a ton. I forgot to fold one end. We don't have to fold both of them over, but this just reduces our bulk. So I'm going to open it up a little bit here, and I'm going to go ahead and put double side tape here so we can make a finished end. The other end is going to be in our circle so it won't be visible. That's why we only do it to one end. And you can fold this back to approximately an inch. It doesn't have to be exact. We have plenty of material. And the only thing you want to do is you want to make sure that it comes together and it's not. So I need to make adjustments. And then I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. So there, now it's coming together nicely. Okay. Okay, so this is our folded edge. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew here and along the fold, and I'm gonna use the right side of the center foot as my guide here, and my needle's in center position. So I'll do a little bit of reversing here. I don't want this reversing to show up, so I'm just gonna do it like with two stitches. And then when I get to the corner, I'm gonna make sure my needle's buried, make sure the needle's coming up, lift my foot, pivot on that. Now I'm a little bit off there, so I'm probably gonna go backwards a little bit. So I'm gonna use the reverse lever and make my needle go back a teeny bit. 
That way my stitch is even with that edge of the foot, which it is now. And I'm not doing any reversing here. I just sew down this side. If you want to be, make sure that you're accurate. You can put the magnetic guide on even in front here. And that way you can use that kind of like as a guide. Makes a lot faster sewing. We'll sew all the way to the end and do some reversing. Coming up next, we'll be sewing our continuous zipper and the flap to our body. You're going to have extra length of zipper. We're going to create a stop with the teeth. So count three or four teeth and cut it. Then we're going to take these teeth and we're going to sink them into the other half of the zipper. And this creates a good stop after you use a hot knife. So I'm going to use something hard and kind of pound them in position. If they're not in position, just finagle a little bit till they are. There we go. Now they're perfectly sunk in place. An R blade works better for this. If you use a precision foot, just take off the uh, foot and you'll be able to do this. So cut this side of the flange off and then you just want to carefully melt the teeth uh, without uh, catching them on fire. If they catch on fire, just blow it out. But this bonds them together. Do it on this side and also on this side. And we're going to do the same thing to the other half of the zipper on one end. So now we need the outside surface to face up. The zipper are up now, so we're going to flip this over and we're going to concentrate on one of these edges here. This is your zipper flange and this is the closed edge. This edge over here is the one that's open. And you want this raw edge to be facing this raw edge. And what we're going to do is we're going to base the zipper to this first. So we're going to use our quarter inch seam stick that comes in the kit and we're going to apply it all along this edge as close to this edge as possible to keep it away from the teeth all the way down the length of the zipper flange. Break it and then make sure it's stuck down well. Peel this up, revealing the glue. Take your zipper. This is the one with the stop that we put on. We're going to go right to the edge and we're going to base this so that it's flush with the edge of the zipper flange. Don't pull on it, just put it down gently. Because as I said before, you can stretch a zipper. Okay, don't worry if your zipper is not all the way or if your zipper is longer, it doesn't matter. We're going to trim it at the end of when we're done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put double sided tape on this. Now this will be folded over so you won't be able to put it all the way up there but we're, we're going to kind of put it as close as we possibly can to that vinyl and we're going to put it all right on this edge. Okay. Now we're going to peel this off leaving the glue on the acrylic and then we're going to take this and this starts right underneath that uh, vinyl. So right there it goes on. Okay. And then it, then you can put it on flat like this. Zippers up. And it should be long, which it is, because the circle is going to get sewn in here. And then make sure that it stays in place. Okay. With a serrated canvas patterning ruler or some object like it. Okay, now let's take it over and sew it. Okay, what we want to do is we want to sew as close to the zipper as possible. So I'm going to move my needle to the left to get as close to those teeth. I don't have a roping zipper foot in. Uh, if you did, I, we'd be too close probably. Um, so now uh, I'm off the canvas right now, but I'm going to sew on the canvas and I'll do reversing when I reach the canvas. And we just want to sew down this edge right along the zipper's teeth. This is an awesome way to put a flange on a zipper. I can think of no better way. Wait till you see the results. They're beautiful. So you can use this for all kinds of projects like this. And then we'll reverse up here. 
and let's do our top stitch next. So our top stitch, we want this flange to go over like this and we put a top stitch right there and it looks gorgeous and it, and it creates a beautiful zipper flange. So let's start over here at this end and let's make sure that the zipper is pushed out there so we're sewing through this flange here. You don't want it to be pushed this way, just back that way. It kind of naturally wants to go that way anyway. And then I'm going to put my needle in right this time, all the way to the right, and I'm going to use the right side of the center foot as my guide, and I'm going to eyeball it, and I'm going to do some reversing there. And we're going to put this top stitch in, following this carefully. Because this stitch, everybody's going to see this stitch. Make sure the zipper's splayed out nicely, and you can kind of pull left or right if you want to be on that first stitch. So make sure everything's nice and flat as you, you sew up to it. Bury your needle if you need to make adjustments. And we'll sew all the way to the other end and do some reversing. So here we are coming to the end. And notice we don't have any stitches here. I am going to reverse right here at the end where my flange is. But then I'm going to sew past up into here, but not go into my teeth. So reverse here as well. And now we are done and we got a gorgeous zipper flange. So this is the zipper and the flange that we just created. So on the other side over here, we're going to do this the traditional way, which is basically just to create our half inch hem using our double sided tape as we're doing here and then folding it over to a half inch. So here we'll fold this over to approximately a half inch, go no less than a half inch. And if you'd like to mark it, you can. Okay, once that's on, we're going to take our zipper. It goes on like this. Uh, we're going to put double-sided tape on this side. Now we need to make sure it's in the right spot, and I'll show you how to do that after we get this double-sided tape on. So the right spot was basically the same as the other side, right to the end of this. Now, don't worry if your stop is sticking over the edge. You want your teeth on the fold, like I can see here. So this should be exactly right, and just baste it right along the fold like this and then we'll take it to the machine and we will sew it. It should be extra long, don't cut off the excess. Needle is to the right to get closer to the teeth. We'll do some reversing here. And sew next to those teeth. And then we'll do reversing at the end. Okay, so we come up to here and I wanna do reversing in the zipper, just like we did on the other one and then we'll just sew all the way up to here and reverse right here. We're done. This is the back end where the circle will go. We're going to put the slider on and uh, all you need to do is basically just start it on one end and then make sure the zipper is even. I got a lot of trailing threads here. So just like that. And then pull it in place. There we go, and see the zipper is even at the end, which is good. We'll zip it all the way to the stop. All the way up there, there we are. Okay, I thought the zipper was on right because the teeth were right, but look how much we're off. So I need to start this again and basically just basically run this side in a little bit for a little bit past the zipper. So I'll put this flange a little bit out Start this one a little bit shy, and then look at that. Now it's even perfect. In this chapter, we'll be adding our hook and loop dots. Okay, these are our hook and loop discs, and they are adhesive, but you're going to have to sew them too. So one side is hook, and the other side is loop, and you get quite a few. You're not going to need all of them. Now what I want is I want this flange to come over and uh, basically keep from flapping in the wind. So uh, I'm gonna put one close to the end here, but not in the way of my slider. So I'll just put the, uh, let's just put the hook over here. It doesn't really matter. 
and I want it pretty close to the edge like that. So now we know where this one goes and I'm going to go ahead and put the loop, nice thing is they're adhesive so they stick pretty well, over on this side. But let's make sure that this basically comes over and know exactly where it's going to be. I can kind of see back here, all right, about there. And, and if it's off a little bit, it's not going to matter too much. But that looks like it's almost directly across from each other, like about like that, I think. And then this, when this comes over and folds, it'll be able to attach like that, and it'll stay in position. So we're going to do that at a couple spots, probably every foot or so down the length. We'll put the hook on this side. I'm not even going to measure. I'm just going to guess approximately a location and we'll put it over here too. Okay, I set a foot, uh, but it, I actually put them every eight and a half inches and I did actually measure it to make sure that it was good. I don't need to put it over here because this is actually going to be sewing into the circle. So that's good for me. You can do whatever you'd like uh, and we'll proceed. To sew these circles on, I'm going to reduce my stitch length to about three millimeters and I want to do the same with reverse and then I want to check it in some scrap. So I'm going to sew forward and then I'm going to twist the fabric and sew in backwards and I'm going to compare the stitch length to see that it's almost equal and it looks like both the reverse and the forward are equal so we're set right. Now I removed the slider so two halves are not together anymore. <clears throat> and how I'm going to do this is, see that first stitch that we have? I'm going to put my needle, and I want to be careful with this, right through that, uh, where that stitch lands. And then I'm going to lower my foot, and I'm going to not reverse. I'm going to sew forward in this small stitch length to the end, and then I'm going to hold my reverse lever down and sew in backwards, in reverse. Okay, and that's all I'm going to do. Now I'm going to lift my needle out and I'm going to move over here to approximately the same location. If you just be as precise as you can. And I'm going to hold my trailer threads and I'm going to lower my needle. And again, I'm not going to sew in reverse. I'm just going to sew two small eyes. So I'm at the end and now I'm going to hold the reverse lever and I want to sew right on top of those previous stitches all the way to there. Okay, so hopefully that looks pretty good and will secure that uh, disc in place. And yes, I do believe it looks good. Now let's cut our trailers, our thread a little bit long. And why do I do that? Well, if, if I have a loop, sometimes what you can do is you can pull on the opposite side, hopefully my fingers are in the way, to pull that loop down into the fabric. So sometimes doing that can help make stitches look really good. And then we'll cut our uh, trailing threads and we'll do that for every one of these loops. This one is on the other side and we are going to do this in exactly the same way. I'm going to put my finger in here to hold my trailing threads. Sorry about that. And we'll sew two eyes in the same manner. Next, we'll be adding the Sailrite logo. The Sailrite logo shows the world that you did it yourself. Uh, we're going to put it down so that, that it's up against this uh, flap, this ruler, and about 10 inches down. Doesn't have to be exact, but right about there should look pretty good. So I'm going to peel it off. It's meant to be a little bit crooked, so you can see that the uh, patch is actually straight. So it's very aggressive, but we still have to sew around it. So I, what I do is I peel this back and position it so that this is parallel with this, and just put it down like that. It's supposed to be a little bit crooked and then we're going to sew around it. Okay, I've set my stitch length to about four millimeters. My needle's in the right position and I'm going to slowly sew this. So I'm going to turn down the Worker Bee Power Pack system so that I get optimal slow speed control so I can sew this beautifully. So now I'm not even going to do reversing here. Man, I have complete control like this. And having a shorter stitch length makes it easier to go around uh, detailed objects like this. Getting caught on my shirt. We'll go all the way around and we'll sew over our first stitches by about a half inch or so. As you sew around you're going to have to stuff some of this in into the throat of the sewing machine. Make adjustments with the needle down. 
Now we just uh, zip it back together like we did before and uh, we'll show you what's next. In this next chapter, we'll be sewing the webbing to the circle. We're going to take our circle that we've already cut out of our pattern material and we're going to fold it in half and we're going to find the center with just making a triangular notch in it going no deeper than a quarter inch on both sides and that's our center for our webbing. Now we can open it up onto the circle. These are the hash marks for the center right there. I'm going to measure over one and a quarter inches and put a little line there and I do the same thing over here one and a quarter inches put a line right here. We want to base to that point. So <clears throat> I'm going to take my webbing and I've already heated the ends and I'm going to fold this over to about three inches or so. Yep, which I was guessing pretty accurately. Three inches and I'm going to put some basting tape on this just to hold everything together. So right down here at, at about four inches, I'm going to go all the way to the bottom of this and just peel this off. This will help hold my loops in place. So again, we want to make it about four inches, which is, get my hand stuck. I'm sorry, three inches is what I said right there. Okay. And then this will stop here but it's going to be upside down like this. And so I want to have a, about a, 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 this much of the loop hanging here because this is actually going to be folded back as we sew this onto the circle. So what is that? That is one inch. Do that. One inch and we want it to be centered over that mark past the edge of the fabric. This will be sewn on right there at the one and a half inch which will be folded back like that. And then we want to do the same thing over here. Now you can see this one goes back a lot further just because I cut it a little bit longer. It's not a big deal. As long as you have uh, about one inch past this thing, uh, that's, that's fine. Let's take it over and we'll show you how to sew it. So I cut a strip of uh, webbing to approximately three inches. It can be two inches if you want. And I put double-sided tape on the back side. And this is the loop that, that we made. At the top, I wanna put this right with the edge and directly over the webbing. Um, this basically means when we sew it here, it'll secure this. It'll also strengthen the, uh, the marine grade fabric when we sew across at this juncture. So that's just a reinforcing on the underside or the inside. I'm going to transfer that mark over here so I can see it a little bit, just make it light. And that's where I want to start sewing. So I'm going to put this uh, right there and I'm going to reduce my stitch length so that I get um, good penetration to about four millimeters. It uh, doesn't have to be precise. So we're going to sew across this point and then I'm going to reverse and I'm going to sew across one more time. And then I'm going to bury my needle, have it come up a little bit, pivot on the needle and I'm going to sew down this edge. Okay, before we get to the uh, loop on this side, let's go ahead and transfer the mark here over to here so I can see where I need to stop because that's an inch and a half from the edge. Where is that mark? Need to transfer it over a little bit more. I can't see it. There we go. Right there. Okay, now I'm going to pivot and I'm going to sew across several times. Then I'm going to bury my needle and sew down this other side and do some reversing when I reach the end. Coming up, we'll be sewing our circle to the main body. Okay, unfortunately we have to turn this wrong side out to sew on the circle. So we're just going to push the back through the front. The top is still zipped up and we'll turn it wrong side out and show you what's next. We're going to trim this so that it's flush with the edge of the fabric like that. Okay, so the now this with the webbing goes inside of this so the inside surfaces face each other. I know this is confusing. Let me try to get this on here. So the webbing gets pushed back like that and the notch gets centered on the zipper. So there's our zipper and there's our notch. Now we're going to sew it. 
I'm just going to mark where that zipper is with a pencil because nobody's going to see that. That way I know that mark is right where it needs to be. I'm going to set this up and I'm not going to sew through the zipper first. I'm going to sew, uh, push the zipper past the presser foot and start right here. Eventually we'll sew through the zipper. I'm going to put the magnetic guide at a half inch because we are sewing a half inch from the edge. Needles in center position. I want to sew a six millimeter straight stitch. So that's what I'm set at. And I am going to do some reversing here just a little bit like that. And all I want to do, outside surfaces are facing each other, is just line up the edges as we sew and don't pull uh, on the fabric, but we want to line it up as it comes across the needle. So my barrel is on the underside and my circle is on the top. If you're a little bit off like I was there, it's not going to make any difference. It really isn't that difficult. Your barrel feeds in straight. The circle gets pulled over to the barrel, or the body, I should say. Okay, we're getting close to that bottom of the uh, loop. So here's my webbing. I need to tuck it back. I'm going to try to keep my hands out of the way, like that. So now it's not in my seam at all. It's tucked back out of the way. Okay, we're just sewing past, or we're just getting ready to sew past it. All right, and then I'll show you what we do when we get to the zipper. Okay, we're almost to the zipper, and it looks like I'm going to have a little bit of excess in the circle a little bit, because that's what happens when you sew things shrink up a little bit. You can expect that kind of, but because, because of that, I'm going to start introducing a little bit of wrinkles in the circle, because I can see it's going to have too much fabric. So notice how I'm kind of pushing the fabric in. These wrinkles will hardly be noticeable, and it should shrink up the, the circle as we sew. If there's a wrinkle at the end, it's not a big deal, because that wrinkle is very close to the zipper, so don't worry about it, but if you can r regulate it by either pulling or shrinking on one, that can help reduce the wrinkle at the end. Okay, so see I've got a pretty good size, substantial wrinkle in this. I'm going to pull this over so that I can, yeah, it's not too bad actually, because I'm shrinking it up. Shrink it up a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm coming to the cir circle or to the zipper, and you notice I shrunk it up to the point where there's hardly any wrinkle at all. You, I can expect a wrinkle sometimes. Now, be careful when you're sewing through the zipper. I'm getting ready to sew through the zipper, and in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll the balance wheel by hand because this is a a, uh, uh, what do you call it, a molded tooth. And uh, I don't want to break my needle. So see that there, my needle hit a molded tooth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually lift my presser foot. I'm sorry, my hand got in the way there. Find an area where it's not molded, lower my foot. And we've sewn through the teeth, but I, it's not enough for me. So I'm going to do it in reverse, but I'm going to sew very slowly in reverse because I don't want to get a deflected needle because I want to lock the stitch down tight. There, it actually went through the coil nicely, and I'm going to go forward one more time, slowly. If I hit something, I'm going to use the presser foot and reposition my needle. Wow, that worked great. So there we go. Okay, even though our math is perfect, there's our little excess fabric. There's a little wrinkle in it. It's not going to be a big deal. You'll hardly ever see that, so don't worry about that. Now it's time to turn the bag right side out. We did not sew here or here. You can do that if you'd like. I like the look of not having stitches on the outside surface, and this is abrasion. And if, even if it folds up like that, it still provides the abrasion that I want. So that's a choice that you can make. And now let's turn it right side out.
And to zip up the front, you zip it from the top, which is nice. Don't have to zip it at the deck. There we go. In this chapter, we'll be adding a side release buckle to our foredeck bag. We're going to cut our webbing to four inches and we're going to put a uh, side release buckle at the bottom. So here's how the buckle works. We want this loop that we just cut and we want the buckle to basically end at the end of the acrylic. So we're going to sew it on there. Now let's talk about the other side. For the other side, I've cut a strip that's eight inches and it will be sewn on over here so it's in line with this one. So let's take this over to the machine. I've unzipped the cover and my stitch length is in about a four millimeter straight stitch. And I'm just gonna sew right here with a couple of uh, rows of straight stitch going forward in reverse a few times. This isn't gonna come under a lot of load. So right there is my first. And then I'm gonna lift the foot here and then I'm gonna go over here to the end of the loop and put a row of stitches right here as well. Forward in reverse a few times. Okay, that one's done. We're going to sew this 8 inch strip of webbing down the exact same way we did with the webbing on the other side, except for we're only sewing through one layer of the webbing. Okay, so to put this through the, the buckle, just go through like this, through the center, over the ridges, and then down through here, like so. And the back side is on these ridges. So it's taut like that, and then you would just snap it to here, and you can make adjustments. So what I'm gonna do at the sewing machine is I'm gonna sew a straight stitch. I'm gonna fold this once and twice, right down the middle here, reversing a few times. I'm not gonna show that. In this final chapter, we'll be loading the sail into the bag. Now we're gonna show the entire process of installing and loading our brand new sail into this bag. We're going to show this process at three times speed just so it doesn't bore you. Our bag is now installed and it looks great. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call or email. We're glad to help. From all of us here at Sailrite, I'm Seth Grant. Thanks for watching.